So for section 3.4, we're just going to work to find all zeros um, given a polynomial. So here's a polynomial, and I'm not going to actually factor it, but I'm going to claim that it factors to x minus 2 times x minus 3 times x plus 4. So that means my zeros would be 2, 3, and negative 4. So I'm going to graph this, check it out, see if that's what happens. I've actually already put it here. So yeah, here it is. Uh, x cubed plus, do, do, do. Let's see, negative 4, 2, and 3. So I claim that that would be the same as x plus 4, x minus 2, and x minus 3. So pretty straightforward. Um, I didn't actually do any work to get there. I already knew the answer. But I want to make some connections here. Notice this x cubed, this first term, that comes from the first three multiplications here. x times x times x is x cubed. And the last term, the plus 24, that would come from those, those last pieces multiplied together. 4 times negative 2 times negative 3 is 6 is positive 24. So as I look at this, I, I notice that this 24, the 4, the 2, and the 3, those are all factors of that 24. And this, since these are these are all 1s, it just seems to work. So notice that like that 24 gives me a hint about what these numbers could be if these are all 1s. Uh, it could be like 6 could have been one of my zeros, but it wasn't. Like the 6 came from the 2 times 3. But whatever my factors are, they would have to be, uh, my, my zeros are, they have to be, they're going to have to be factors of that. So we do have a really good advantage. We can find a lot of these zeros just by graphing that. But what I'm going to do um, before... I think about graphing it, so I'm going to make another equation. I know that it factors to this, 2x minus 3, x plus 5, and x minus 1. So notice my zeros here would be 1, negative 5, and if you set that equal to 0 and solve it, 2x minus 3 equals 0, add the 3, divide by the 2, 3 halves. Notice those are what my zeros are. If I were to multiply this out, go the opposite direction of the direction we're going to go to, I just want to think about the first term and the last term right now. There'll be some stuff in the middle. But notice the first term would end up being 2x times x times x. So that's 2x cubed. A bunch of stuff would happen in the middle. And the last term would be, let's see, uh, negative 3 times 5 times negative 1, 15. Looking at that first and last term, that gives me some hints about what my zeros are going to be. Notice the 3, the 5, and the 1 came from the last term, and the 2 that's in the denominator here came from the first term. And this is really over 1 over 1. So really those 1s came from the first term as well. So if I think of the factors of 15, factors of the last term, over factors of 2, the coefficient from the first term, those are, whatever this polynomial, polynomial actually is, those are the only possible zeros. So if I have a polynomial, so we'll say uh, a of n times x of n plus a of n minus 1 times x of n minus 1 plus blah, 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 all the way down to a sub 0. My possible real zeros, there might be some other ones, but the only possible real zeros are going to be factors of the constant, the last term, divided by factors of the coefficient, the leading coefficient. Now those aren't guaranteed factors, but those are the only possible factors. So like, I knew what the factors were here, but if I had this information, I'm sorry, I knew what the factors were here, but if I had this information, let me think, factors of 15 are 
plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 5. So how about I just say plus or minus 1, 3, and 5 over factors of 2 or 1 and 2. So instead of having this infinite group of possibilities, I have a pretty small group here. 1 over 1 is 1. Uh, 3 over 1 is 3. I'm going to say plus or minus all of these. 5 over 1 is 5. 3, uh, three over 1 over 2 is 1 half. 3 over 2 is 3 halves. 5 over 2 is 5 halves. Just by looking at my initial polynomial and analyzing the first and last terms, I get my list of my possible zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. At least my real zeros. There's only six possible ones. So if I'm brute forcing this, I would go, I'll try one and see if it works. If it doesn't work, I'll try three and see if it works. Notice that my answers are from this list. So this is a list of possibilities. So here is my polynomial p of x is x cubed minus 3x plus 2, and I'm going to have to find all the zeros of this. So first off, let me think about my possibilities. Uh, my possibilities are factors of the last term, so plus or minus 1 or 2 over the first term, which is just 1. So really, I just have four possibilities, uh, plus or minus 1 or plus or minus 2. So I think that what I'll do is I'll just try some stuff out. So let's try 2, see if that works. And I'm using synthetic division here. So I have 1x cubed. Notice I don't have zero. I don't have any x squared, so 0x squared, minus 3x is in a 2. So bring it down, multiply, add, multiply. It's not looking good. Um, add, multiply, add. My remainder is not zero, so two is not a possibility. So positive two, not a possibility. All right, let's try one. Bring it down, multiply, add, multiply, add. Oh, this looks good. Multiply, boom. Yeah, great. So one works. So one of my zeros is one. Now here's what's nice. I don't have to start over. If, if I have one of the zeros, Right, I factored out an x minus 1. Notice what's left. This was an x cubed. It, it shifts down 1 degree to an x squared. So I have 1x squared, I have 1x, and I have a negative 2. I don't have to start over. I've already factored out this x minus 1. So I can just work with this remainder and, and see what I, can, what I can go from there. And since it's a quadratic, I'm just going to try and factor it. Uh, yeah, things that multiply to negative 2 add to 1 are positive 2 and negative 1. Do, do, do. And so it looks like I have my zeros. I have a 1, which has a multiplicity of 2. It's repeated. And I have negative 2. Sweet. Let me, let me graph that and make sure that that works. Remember if it has a multiplicity of of 2, it should make a little local parabola there. So let me graph that. x cubed minus 3x plus 2. Yeah, that matches exactly. Um, now notice you could have just graphed it and found the zeros that way. Like the software, we have software, we have graphing calculators that would do it for us too, right? x cubed minus 3x plus 2, hit graph, and it shows up there as well. So that's okay. I do want you to do the practice on the, uh, on the actual synthetic division, though. Actually find them. All right, we want to find all the zeros. So let me think of the possibilities. It would be factors of 6, 1, 2, and 3 divided by factors of 2, 1 and 2. So that would be like positive 1, 2, positive negative 1, 2, and 3, or positive negative 1 half, I mean and. Uh, 2 over 2 is 1, I already have that. 3 over 2 is 3 halves. So there's all my possibilities, positive or negative, all those.
All right, so let's try something. Let's try uh, one, see if it works. 2x cubed, so 1x squared, negative 13x, six ones. Bring it down, multiply, add, multiply. I don't think this is gonna work. Add, multiply, nope, so one doesn't work. So then I could try negative one and just keep trying stuff and see what works. Uh, I, actually, I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna see if two works. I wonder if it works. Bring it down, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply. Yep, it works, good. So here's what I did. I factored out an x minus two. Remember this was an x cubed, so it's down a degree. So what's left is two x squared plus five x minus three. And then from here, what I can do is I can uh, maybe try and factor this quadratic, or I could uh, use quadratic formula if I need to. I think this is going to factor to, uh, let's see, 2x plus 3. That would give me a positive 6, a minus 1, minus 1 is 5. Yep, that's it. So here it is in factored form. And then my zeros would be 2, 1 half, and negative 3. And again, what I could do is, if I don't trust myself here, I could plug them back in. I could take two and plug it back in, make sure it evaluates to zero. Same with the negative three, same with the one half. Or I could graph it and make sure that uh, that, equ that graph crosses the x axis at those points. I should have at most four zeros. Some might be repeated, some not. Let's, let's see what happens. Um, and I know my possibilities will be factors of 10, 1, 2, 5, and 10, over 1. So those are, those are all my possibilities right there. So let's give it a try. I'm going to pick one and go. Uh, first off, I'll lift off the coefficients from here. So I have 1x to the fourth, negative 5x cubed, negative 5x squared, 23x is in a 10. Um, now let's try one. Bring it down, multiply, add. Multiply, add, multiply. This is not looking good. It's One's not going to work. I just know that I'm not going to end up with a zero there. So one didn't work. Uh, I could try negative one. Let's try two. Bring it down, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply. No, not going to work either. Uh, let's try negative two. Bring it down, multiply, add, uh, what's that, negative seven, multiply, add, multiply, add, oh nice, yes, multiply, I got one, sweet, so, Negative two works. So that means I factored out an x plus two. Remember this zero makes that a zero. And what's left was this was an x to the fourth. So I shifted it down to an x cubed. So I have one x cubed minus seven x squareds plus nine x's plus five. So I know that two worked. And notice that like I don't have to start over. I don't have to restart from here I've already taken out one of the zeros, so I can just work with this, with this x cubed. 10 is no longer a possibility. So now I would just keep trying from there, and uh, let's try 5, and hope I get stuff that works. So bring it down, multiply, add, multiply, oh yeah, <laughs> add, multiply, and I got another zero. So here's what just happened. I had already taken out an x plus 2. I just divided out an x minus 5. And since this was a cubic, this just shifted down to a quadratic. So x squared minus 2x minus 1. Great. And now from here, uh, since I just have a quadratic, I could just start to um, try and factor that. Or if that doesn't factor, use quadratic formula. 
And I'm not going to be able to factor from there. So I'm going to use quadratic formula. So a negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. All right, negative negative 2 is 2. Be really careful here. Negative 2 squared is, is uh, 4, is positive 4. And one of the things I, I know happens is people will use their calculator and they'll go negative 2 squared. And this is the wrong way to do it. And they'll get negative 4 and they'll go with negative 4 as the answer. But notice what happened here is you only squared the 2. You, you want to square a negative 2. So you actually have to would have to put it in parentheses. Negative 2 squared. And that gives you a positive 4. That's just something to be careful with when you're using that calculator. So 4. And then um, negative 4 times 1 times negative 1 is positive 4. That's all over 2. I'll keep going from here. Uh, 2 plus or minus square root of 8 over 4. Simplify that. That's 4 times 2. Square root of 4 is 2. So I have 2 plus or minus. Oh, I have that 4 get there. Sorry about that. It's just a 2. 2 plus or minus square root of 4 is 2 root 2 over 2. This 2 goes into both of those, leaving me 1 plus or minus root 2. So my zeros are negative 2, 5, 1 plus the square root of 2, and 1 minus the square root of 2. Let me graph that and see what that looks like on Desmos. So there's my 5, there's my negative 2, now I have these, the 2.414 and negative 1.414. So let me see what Desmos tells me that these are. 1 plus square root of 2, 1 minus square root of 2. Yep, there they are, they match. So I am... I'm good, I found them. Now, on the test, I'm going to ask for exact answers for these radicals. So I won't accept answers like 2.414 or negative, four, uh, negative 0.414. I want them exact. So you will need to do need to do the work to get there for them. And I want to do two more examples. I have this fifth degree polynomial. So I'll have at most five zeros. So I think what I'm gonna do with this one first, I'm gonna I'm gonna use my tools. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna graph that on my graphing calculator. Um, since that's what I'm what, what I'm gonna ask you to use on the test and see what it see what it gives me. So this is this is fair game. So I want to graph uh, I'm going to hit that graph button. Wow. Okay, I've got some possibilities here. Three. I've got a possibility here at three. All right, sorry, negative three. It looks like I might have a repeated root at negative one. This might be one. And I don't know. That might be like one and a half, maybe, something like that. So there's my possibilities. So I'm going to use this to give me possibilities. And then now I'm going to uh, see if they actually make sense in the context of the problem. So I said uh, negative 3, maybe negative 1. 1 might be repeated. Oh, wait. Uh, no, negative 1 was, re was repeated. 1, and I don't know, maybe 3 halves? Are those reasonable? Well, let me see. 9... And two, so factors of nine over factors of two. So I definitely see a negative three, a negative one, a one, and I see a three halves. Those are all good, good candidates. So let me go through and see see if they work. So I'll start with negative three. 
2x to the fifth, 5x to the fourth, negative 8x cubed, negative 14x squared, 6x is in a 9. So negative 3, uh, bring it down, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, oh this looks good, add, multiply, boom. So here's what we did, we factored out an x plus 3, remember because it's a 0, and what we're left with, this was x to the 5th, we we're left with uh, 2x to the 4th minus x cubed, one of them minus 5x squared plus x, 1x plus 3. All right, so I knew negative three worked. So let me try negative one. Bring it down, multiply. Um, add, multiply, add, multiply. Nice, add, multiply, that worked as well. So I'd already taken out an x plus three. I just took out an x plus one. And this was fourth degree, so this should shift down to two degrees. So I have two x cubes minus three x squared minus two x plus three. Now, I thought that negative one was a repeated root. It looked like it on the graph. So I'm gonna take it out again. Two, and I just bring it down, then multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, Yes, so I have x plus three, and this x plus one, I could write it twice or I could just say squared. This was a cubic, so this shifted down to two x squared minus five x uh, plus three. Now from here, I could, I could factor this, or I could even do the synthetic division again. You know, like I'll take out the, the positive one. 2, and then multiply, negative 3, multiply. So I have uh, x plus 3, x plus 1 squared, x minus 1, and then notice what's left is a 2x minus 3. This was a quadratic here, shifted down to a linear. And I, so I know my zeros are actually negative 3, negative 1, 1, and 3 halves. Now I saw that on the graph, I saw that as a possibility on the graph, but I confirmed it through the synthetic division. I want you to do that. Use the synthetic division and confirm it on out. All right, last example. Let's, uh, let's find the zeros on this equation right here. Um, Got a lot of possibility. Well, actually, I don't have that many possibilities for my for my rational zeros. Negative four. Um, so plus or minus one, two, or four over a bunch of ones. Um, so I really only have one, two, three, six possible uh, rational pieces, and there might be some extra pieces. Let me graph it. See what happens. So it looks like there might be a repeated one here at negative two. This looks like it might be two thirds. I don't know. This is about two. This is maybe three and a third, something like that. Let me see if those are, let me see if those are reasonable. Well, the whole idea of a third doesn't work because I would need a three out here for that. So I don't, I don't like, those possibilities, but I had negative one as a possible re repeated root and two. Those those match my list. So let's go with that. Let's uh, let's start with that negative one and see what happens. Oh, that went down. So one x to the fifth, negative four x to the fourth, negative one x cubed, ten x squareds, two x's and a negative four. Bring it down, multiply, add, multiply add, multiply, add, multiply, 
add, nice, multiply, zero. So negative one works. So I factored out an x plus one, and this is a fifth degree, so it shifted down to, I have an x to the fourth minus five x cubed plus four x squared. Now you don't need to write this, this thing that I'm doing over on the side, but I wanna make that connection between what's going on here and the factoring. I thought negative one was a repeated root, so I'll, I'll try and take it out again. Bring it down, multiply, add, multiply, whoa, add, multiply, oh, that is gonna work. Add, multiply, another zero. So I took out an extra, another x plus one, so I could write it or I could just say squared. This was fourth degree, so it shifts down to a third degree. So I have one x cubed minus six x squared plus 10 x minus four and two. So I think two worked as well. So let me try that. Bring it down, multiply, add, uh, multiply, add, multiply. Nice. So I've taken out two x plus ones. I have divided out an x minus two, and I'm left with this quadratic x squared minus four x plus two. All right, and I want some exact values here. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to, to um, factor that. I'm gonna have to use quadratic formula. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c all over two a. So what's that give me? A positive four plus or minus negative four squared is positive 16 minus eight over two which is four plus or minus square root of eight over two. Eight is four times two, so I can square root the four part. Square root of four is two. This two is still square rooted. Two goes into both of those, so it leaves me two plus or minus uh, root two. So my zeros are negative one, two, 2 plus root 2 and 2 minus root 2. And if I go back and check that 2 plus root 2 and that 2 minus root 2, I can see where that falls on the graph and make sure that that matches the point. All right, that's how we're going to go about finding real zeros. Give those uh, practice in the book a try, the assignment. And do remember, when we take the exam, I'm going to ask you to submit your work to get credit for it. So you can enter your answer on the actual exam, but I will need you to send me pictures of your scratch work as well so I can see them. All right. Good luck. Send me any questions that you have.